So thank you everyone for coming. Uh, this is our second speaker series for our Tigger House Student Alliance. Um, we have with us tonight the very talented Michelle mm -hmm. Sandone. Um, Michelle will go into more detail about uh, her background, but Michelle is a registered dietitian and has a master's degree in nutrition. Um, and she currently is the foods teacher at Middletown High School North. So Michelle, you want to take it away? Surely, surely. Hey guys. Um, hi. So, hi. Hello. So excited to be here. So thank you for having me. Um, so anyone that is on, I am going to be trying to make this as interactive as possible. So if you're participating with me, I would love you so much. Um, I teach high school. So I teach in a hybrid session uh, right now. So I am teaching two kids in front of me while I'm teaching to kids online. Um, and so I constantly have people not answering me online. So if you could participate with me, I would be so thankful. <laughs> um, I am going to start us off by playing a little game with you guys. Um, so this is called Never Have I Ever. I don't know if you've ever played this game, but it is the food edition. So we are going to play a little Never Have I Ever food edition right now. So let me figure out how to share my screen with you. Um, so let's say, let me move this around. Hmm. Give me one second. Never Have I Ever. There we go. Tell me when you can see this. It looks like it's just going to take a minute to um, get you guys in there. So yep. are you seeing my never have I ever? Perfect. All right. Yes. Awesome. All right. So if you guys can take yourselves off mute, that would be helpful. So you can answer me as we are going. But let's see how we go. Never have I ever eaten a rare steak. Who has never eaten a rare steak? Like not like cooked at all? Uh, well, you know, it could be a little charred on the outside, but we're talking rare, like blood is running rare steak. Never. Never? Yeah, right. never. Amy, never. Um, we've got Carly, never. How about you guys at home? Uh, oh, so no, I'm, I'm fully in. I've definitely eaten rare, probably raw. There you go. <laughs> okay. Um, what about you, Dan, Joe? How about you guys? Yeah, um, never, maybe once. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, never have I ever dined alone in a restaurant. I feel like I've I, done that. I feel like I never have. Yeah. What? I don't know. Ocean Cafe, I have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, my guys at home, uh, Dan and Joe, why have you never? What uh, is dining think... out to you? What do you feel like when you go to a restaurant? Why? Why would you feel intimidated to dine alone? <laughs> um, probably just because like we're pretty young, and it's like kind of weird. To I mean, I feel like you know, it's like not just because you're young. It's because it's weird, right? <laughs> I mean, it's, just, it's a social thing. It's supposed to feel weird, right? So it's not because you're young, and I take offense to that. Um, <laughs> um, it is because it's a social, eating in general is a social activity. All right. Never have I ever eaten raw sushi. All right, so we've all eaten sushi. Mm. All right. Never have I ever eaten awful. Who knows what awful is? Oh, I've never awful? done that. What is awful? What is it, it is tongue, liver, brain, kidney. It's the weird like organ meat of animals. <laughs> what about liver worse than bologna? Does that fall uh, into the category? No, because that's just processed like... <laughs> random meats like that's oh, like never. leftover things that they just process chop up and throw in there <laughs> never nice. never right, so never i've tried some liver spread or yeah. something yeah, yeah. okay I've eaten liver <laughs> okay and did you enjoy it no someone said it's fancy you know go for it yeah, it's, it's so fancy so fancy that it's too fancy for me too. Okay. <laughs> Never have I ever eaten in a restaurant outside of the United States. 
my boys at home you better be participating with me come on yeah i have i've been to mexico before okay nice i don't know who that was because you're not popping up on my screen uh that was joe joe dan how about you uh yeah i went to a few places i uh, most memorably memorably is probably ireland nice and what was your meal there um it was honestly pretty similar to American food. Like we had like steaks and stuff. And just, okay. We didn't have anything too like different. She fancy. All right, cool. Yeah. All right. This is an easy one. Never have I ever eaten dark chocolate. Today? Or <laughs> <laughs> this hour? <laughs> so most of us have eaten dark chocolate, right? Okay. Um, never yeah. have I ever eaten something after it fell off the floor or the ground. <laughs> Five second roll, anyone? <laughs> no? Um, I definitely have. So I tell my kids in school this all the time. I get it. You're home. Something falls. You eat it. Never should you ever do it in my classroom, though, because you may not <laughs> make it out alive. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, never have I ever complained about my food in a restaurant to the restaurant staff. I'm a never have I ever on that one. Oh, um, wow. I have. Nope. Uh, so I am. But like, what I if you. have worked in restaurants for a really long time, and I just know that how hard that industry is. I've never oh, complained yeah. in any restaurant. Wow. All right. That's never nice of you. I've never eaten squid. Who's never Mama. eaten squid? Uh, Anyone never eaten it? All right. Never have I ever had a fine dining experience. All right, we all have, we're all pretty fancy, huh? All right. <laughs> Never have I ever eaten Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts. Me too, Me too. especially roasted with some bacon. You? Yep, yep. All right, guys, we're doing good. We're doing good. Uh, Never have I ever, so this is, targeted at my high school kids cooked a meal for my whole family oh yeah never never <laughs> <laughs> like a DiGiorno pizza count what does Say like a again? DiGiorno pizza count it does not. <laughs> <laughs> not but I love that you did it I love that you did it all right we're gonna have to work on that all right never have I ever eaten homemade ice cream meaning ice cream that you made and not like oh I went and bought somebody else's homemade ice cream never 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 no that banana no that's not the same <laughs> <laughs> no right, never have I ever eaten food from a roadside stand or street cart mm. has everyone eaten from one now, let me ask you another question. <laughs> when you've eaten at them, have you actually looked at the cleanliness of some of them? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would ruin nope. it. Nope. <laughs> no, but the funny thing is, is that some of them are so, so clean and you're like, oh my God, it's like cleaner than my actual kitchen. And some of them you're like, oh God, please never, ever. <laughs> True. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. Never have I ever eaten something I have caught or hunted. Mm. I don't think I ever have. Have all of you eaten something that you have caught or hunted? Yeah. Wow. yeah. Technically, depends on what you mean by caught. I sort of <laughs> caught a fish with a lot of help. Did so, you eat it? Yes. All right, I good. I did eat it. I don't know if I caught it. But. Well, you had some help, so you caught a fish, yeah. right? Okay. Right. Awesome. Um, never have I ever ordered food delivery via Uber Eats or DoorDash. Never, never, never. Really? Okay. I never have. I never have. Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> raise your hand. No, I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> All right. I have a whole bunch of these, so I am going to skip over some of them. Um, never have I ever eaten fruit directly from a tree or a vine. Apple picking. Anyone just go grab yep. it, chomp upon it. Yep. Yeah. It tastes so That's much so better that way, right? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, never have I ever eaten non-chicken eggs. Like no. quail eggs, anything like that. Never. Delicious. I have, yeah. And? I, I from what I remember, it was in France. It was good. <laughs> All right. Pretty All right. good. All right. So those are my never have I ever's. 
boys thank you so much for actually like you know participating i appreciate that all right so i'm gonna can you see this now do you see my actual presentation my uh tigger house presentation slides yes. is that what you're saying okay awesome all right so this is me um my name is michelle sandone my birthday is march 30th in case you wanted to know because guess what guys it is um it is encouraged to just send me gifts if you would like to that's fine um, <laughs> I was born in Barnegat I went to Southern Regional and as uh, Amy said I have a master's degree in clinical nutrition actually I have a bachelor's degree in nutrition from Rutgers and I have my master's degree from New York Institute of Technology which is part of um, New York College of Osteopathic Medicine um, I have a major in food and nutrition and these are my people. So I think it's important that you know who my people are just because it's going to explain a little bit about how I got to where I am today. So this is um, my daughter Liliana on the left, my son Anthony on the right, and my really, really annoying puppy in the middle. Her name is Chloe and <laughs> she is improving every day, but she is super high strong. So those are my people. Um, so this is my kind of work experience and how I got to where I am. So um, as we said, I have a nutrition background. Um, I started my life in nutrition off in South, um, in the um, South Bronx at a hospital called St. Barnabas Hospital. So I actually started the nutrition program in an HIV clinic, as well as their oncology, medical oncology and radiation oncology clinics. And um, my work experience there was amazing. I learned so much, um, but I also, the South Bronx is a really heavily um, high in HIV. I mean, the HIV virus there at that time, which is about 10 plus years ago, um, was sort of more like the common cold. Um, it was a really interesting place, a lot of poverty, a lot of drugs, um, a lot of people that were really having a tough time. So when I left St. Barnabas, I went to work at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, which is on the Upper East Side. And um, I really had a very, very cool job there. I created wellness programs. I did cooking demonstrations. I did food tastings, um, cooking classes, lectures. Um, and really worked with not only staff and community, but the patients as well. Um, during the same time I was at Sloan, I had a private practice, and then I had kids, which is what I, why I showed you the pictures of my kids before. And what became really challenging for me was trying to figure out how to manage family life and traveling from here to the Upper East Side, and that's why I kind of had to switch gears. And so at that point, I was like, what do I love about my job? And I love the education piece. And I loved, um, I loved the cooking piece and all of that. And so I went alternate route to become a teacher. And so now I am a culinary arts teacher at High School North. And it's such a weird transition for many people to look at, but it totally makes sense to me, right? Um, it, was, uh, it just seemed obvious that once I had a family, I needed to change my lifestyle a little bit. And so that's where I'm at now. So it's my seventh year teaching. I love it. Um, my, this is the hardest year ever because although um, all the things I love about my job, it's like vir half virtual now, which is super hard. But it's important for you guys to realize that your um, education and your career path might take you zigs and zags and all over the place. And it's, it's not like it was 20, 30, 40 years ago where you had to stay in one job, one career and that, mm -hmm. and, and you couldn't grow and change. So your jobs may grow and change. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you don't know exactly what you want to do with something right now. Um, it, you're, it's really going to evolve as you evolve. And I mean, I'm like 22 and I mean, my life is still evolving, right? My career path is still evolving. And um, it's just important for you to realize that it's okay to not know exactly where you wanna go. You're gonna start somewhere and then you're gonna end up somewhere great and in the place that's right for you. Um, so what I'm gonna talk to you guys about a little bit is food, right? Food and wellness and food is a lot of different things to a lot of different people. 
So really, I want to talk to you about what's your food story, right? What do you typically eat? Um, so Joe and Dan, you're the only um, kids that I actually know that are on this call right now. I don't know if other ones are on there, but I'm going to like pick on you guys a little bit. Yeah, Michelle, can, can you there's guys a bunch of kids. Food? Yeah, oh, there are. Okay, I don't Just see scroll them. down. Hi, Maddie. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. It's Where okay. Thank you for telling me that. All yep. right. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> Maddie's on, iPhone's Thank on. You. Okay, I see you guys. Okay. All right, so guys, what do you typically eat? What's your normal food intake like? What are your faves? I like burgers. Yeah. Burgers are good. Yeah. If you um, talk to my you... dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, what else? What else do you guys eat? Maddie, how old are you? I'm 17. Okay, do you have your license? Did you get your license yet? Yeah, I have it. Okay, how much has your eating changed since you got your license? Are you going out to eat more with friends? Is it more social now that you're able to drive places to eat? Yeah, I mean, I've always been a big food person. Okay. So honestly, it hasn't changed that much, but the fact that I can like actually go actually go get yeah. it now, it's really, it's easier. And then also I have to pick up food instead of getting it delivered for a family because they say it's quicker. <laughs> okay. But it also like, once you get your license, that social part of eating becomes so much bigger than it was before. Um, yeah. I was at dinner with my boyfriend's family earlier and I drove there. It was, we, we got like a early dinner. Nice. Um, so basically all of us have a food story. Our food story is what we typically eat, plus what your family cooks at home. Um, if you go out to eat a lot, do you care about nutrition or not? Do your parents care about what you eat or don't eat? So all of these things for you guys really, really um, makes a big difference. So let's go through a few scenarios. Let's say that you're at a fair, carnival, something, and you eat a ton of different foods, mozzarella sticks, you've got a uh, shake you've got some cookies a taco maybe some fried oreos some pie some soda um you didn't drink really any water how are you gonna feel tired your stomach would hurt your stomach would hurt right you'd be super tired you'd be run down um you're you would just feel kind of blah right all right what about thanksgiving mm -hmm. who thanksgiving's coming up right so you're at your grandma's she is the best cook ever. And you eat a ton of turkey, mashed potatoes, cranberries, all that stuff. How are you going to feel after that? Ready for dessert. <laughs> what if you've already eaten your dessert? Um, so tired. again, so Dan, you've said it twice, right? When you eat all that bulky, super high carbohydrate, super high sugary food, we get tired. We get run down, right? Um, how about... Your mom's prepping a bunch of different foods. You try some fruit, roasted vegetables, some kale chips. I don't know if any of you would even try that. Um, you eat some oatmeal in the morning. You're eating some, you're drinking water throughout the day. How do you think you're going to feel then? Anyone? Frankie, talk to me, kid. Uh, good. You would good? good? Do you think you're going to have more energy? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, right? So you're gonna have a lot more energy. So it's not a surprise, the better we eat, the better we feel. But there's a lot of different things that influence our food choices. Who can think of some things that would influence our food choices? Mm-hmm, you guys are, so Maddie, talk to me again. Talk to me. Um the time you, of the day oh my god that's awesome yes time of day is a huge influence on our food choices right so at breakfast time we typically choose breakfast foods right i mean it's not to say we can't eat those foods at different times but that is a big influence on what we eat that wasn't even on my list but that was a, a that was awesome maddie um who else is on there i'm gonna pick on you guys a little bit um dan i'm back at you kid Talk to me. What's something that you think influences your food choices? Um, your mood. Absolutely. So talk to me more, buddy. What about your mood can influence your food choices? Uh, if you're feeling like energetic and you want to work out, then you'll eat like 
food that's better for you or you'll have like awesome. you want to have snacks you'll drink water awesome 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 frankie what about you what's something that influences your food choices like availability like what's yes available? absolutely so how available food is to you is a huge one right so we're going to talk about a bunch of different things so the first one actually that none of you said, but I know you were thinking because I could see it in your eyes, um, is biological, right? So our hunger, our appetite, how palatable a food is to you. So if you're hungry, right, you're going to eat. Hunger is like you just have that those hunger pangs you need to eat. Appetite is more like what you're craving or what you the want to eat. So hunger is your need to eat, whereas appetite is your want to eat. And then how palatable a food is also comes into play. So what do you think I mean by palatability? Joey, what's palatability when we're talking about foods? Um, like, do you like it or not? You like it, but what are some things that would uh, affect how palatable a food is? If you're allergic. Oh, that's actually a good one. That's actually a good determinant of food choice. Um, but I don't know that it falls into palatability, but you're right. Like we're going to avoid foods that we're allergic to, hopefully. What about, I'm going to give you guys a hint. So um, if you are in a restaurant and you walk by, right? And you're like, and you stop short and you're like, that looks good. What is that, right? So mm -hmm. sight, sight, seeing a food that looks really good is going to be a determinant on why you eat something, right? So sight, what else? If I'm talking about senses, what else can affect how palatable a food is to you? Oh. Smell, yes. So smell is actually a huge thing. So the better it smells, the more we want to eat it. If it doesn't smell good, we're not gonna wanna eat it. What else? Maddie, you there? Sometimes, like if you've already had it, the texture. Oh my like God. Sometimes I'll be in the mood for oatmeal, but then sometimes I'm like, that just sounds so gross because I'll think about how it's like squishy and gross. Like, ah. <laughs> Maddie, that is huge, right? So the texture of food really plays a big role in if we eat that food or not. So I have a huge um, thing with uh, squishy foods as well. So flan, I always like the ingredients always sound really good to me. And I always order it. And my husband always tells me I don't like it. And then I order it anyway, because he's always wrong, right? And then I taste it and I'm like, oh, the mouthfeel of this is gross. So different mouthfeels uh, affect different people. So that is also a huge one. So we have sight, we have smell, we have texture. And what's the biggest one? On why we choose a food. taste right how it tastes if it doesn't taste good to you you're not going to want to eat it all right um so we talked about that so also somebody said cost right um so or availability somebody actually said so if something if we don't have money on us right we're not going to be able to eat it but think about people in other populations like we're pretty lucky in our um where we live that we have access to food food is available to us most of us um have that ability to to purchase things but if you have a job right now you know that when you get paid right or if you are waiting tables or busing or whatever and you get tips you know that once you have money in your pocket you might choose different foods than if you haven't been paid that day um so these are also factors that um affect your food choices your recess your resources so your um skills do you know how to cook um somebody said before that they only know how to make DiGiorno pizza um so if you only have a um certain skill set you're not gonna reach out and try to cook more things um so this is huge this is the one that i actually wanted to talk about a lot so our social determinants right so social aspects of eating are huge. Our culture, our family, our religion, our peers, whether we're celebrating something or not. So talk to me about something in the social atmosphere that affects your food choices. Dan, talk to me. About the... Social. So what, what social, um, social factors affect your food choices? 
Do you ever so, eat for social reasons, not because of hunger? Yeah, I mean, uh, if my friends are ordering food, and uh, even if I'm like not craving that thing, or if like I'd rather eat healthy, but if everyone's like, oh, I want Chipotle, then I'll get Chipotle, obviously, because I, I'd rather do that. Because you want to hang. Nothing. Yep, yeah, absolutely. So for your age right now, where you're at, your uh, friends are a huge part of why we eat. So many times eating just because our friends are eating and because that's the social thing. So there, it's something to do. What about culture? Who has eats foods because of the culture that their family is? Yeah. Anyone have certain foods that they eat? Uh-oh, I'm seeing pointing down here. <laughs> Tell me, what are your, what culture? You've got a lot of Italian. Uh, yeah. Because Pasta. Of yeah. Pasta, that's awesome, right? So that part though is such a huge, is strong tie to how we eat. That's great. Our family, so our family, so plays into culture, but also for you guys as students, your parents are buying your foods, preparing a lot of your foods. So they are a big, big determinant in, in what you're eating. Religion, so some religions, you know, don't eat um, beef. Some religions don't eat pork. Um, and some religions don't have meat at all, like on Good Friday or things like that. So our religion also plays a big role into how we're eating. And then, of course, celebrations. So how many times are we eating because it's somebody's birthday, right? Or because we um, are celebrating, you know, a, a big win for your team. So celebrations are also a huge determinant there. Psychological determinants. Who eats when they're stressed? Maddie, talk to me. What do you choose when you're stressed? I'm a sweet person. Like when sweet. you're stressed. That's yeah. interesting to me, actually. Do you ever choose different foods when you're sad? Sweets. <laughs> Only sweets. Okay, there's a reason for that. Chocolate, but... ice cream. Okay. Cookies, all that. Like it's, it's I shouldn't, but I do it. <laughs> We all do it. It's not just you, Maddie. So the also, interesting I don't want to interrupt. Sorry, but we also have Maddie with a Y, right? I'm sorry. There's two Maddies. Yeah. So there's one. There's there are two. Um, Maddie with a Y. Yes, is down there. I don't see her face though. Okay. Well, Maddie with a Y. If you do want to say hi and participate, that'd be awesome. But if not, that's fine too. Maddie with a Y. I would love to see your face right now. Um, but yes, yeah, so we all eat different foods when we have different feelings happening. So Maddie, not with a Y, Maddie with an I, um, tends to go for sweets. Anyone else um, go for any different types of food? No? All right. So I'm going to throw something at you. When you're stressed, does anyone crave salty, crunchy foods? Yes, right? So that's why Maddie with an I, um, you're, I love that you are able to identify, but a lot of people crave uh, more of the sweets when they're down or sad, and then they crave those crunchy, salty foods when they're stressed. So the crunchy, salty foods actually have that, uh, right? Like that ability to like, it. you feel it, you feel the stress leaving your body, right? Um, and then when you're down or sad, we crave sweets. So the reason we crave sweets is that sugar actually increases serotonin levels shortly, short-lived. And then those serotonin levels actually make us feel better. Um, so we do eat for these reasons. And these reasons are, are challenging because there's so many different reasons that we're choosing to eat um, instead of just hunger. So what are things, especially for those stress and those, um, the stress reasons and the mood reasons, what are uh, things that you can do to increase those serotonin levels in ways that don't include bad for you foods? Does anyone have an outlet that they use, a healthier outlet to help with stress or um, sadness, et cetera? Um, working out. Working out is huge. Wait, I'm scrolling to see who just said that to me. Frankie. Okay. Um, Frankie, working out is huge because exercise actually does increase those endorphins as well. And those endorphins are actually what helps us to feel better. Anyone else other than working out? 
Pet therapy. Pet therapy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely. That happiness that you're feeling from a pet is a huge um, stress reliever, right? Mm -hmm. What else? Christina, I don't know if you're talking to me or. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the Calm app. I use the Calm app. Oh, that's awesome. So like kind of a meditative. Like app. meditate. Yeah. Yeah. So a meditation app. Awesome. Does anyone do yoga? Does anyone read? Anyone go for a walk? Sports, right? So um, I don't know. Does anyone on here play a sport? Yeah. Dan, Maddie, Frankie, how about you? Yeah, okay, what do you guys play? I play lacrosse. Awesome, is your season normal or go? I have not started my season yet because we're in the spring. Spring, you're in spring, I'm but sorry. Like, for right yeah. now, we, uh, we are. Okay, prepared. are you training or anything right now? Right now, I can't, but the rest of my team is. Okay. Maddie, where do you go to school? I go to RBC. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Uh, Dan, what do you play? Uh, I play rugby. Okay, awesome. Um, so having these outlets, whether it's physical, whether it's uh, breathing techniques, um, it's important to have these kind of um, options, right? So before turning to food, especially because oftentimes what happens when we eat or like gorge ourselves because of emotional reasons, we wind up feeling guilty afterwards. Um, and so that actually kind of brings our emotions down further, um, especially during this whole pandemic. Like it's, it's so easy to turn to food um, for comfort. And that is kind of ingrained in us, that whole idea of comfort foods. Do you know what a comfort food is? Does anyone have a comfort food? So a comfort food is usually something that is tied to a happy memory, right? So it could be something that uh, is tied to a traditional food during one of your like Christmas celebrations or um, something that your grandma used to make or your mom made all the time. So like mac and cheese is a big one. Mashed potatoes is usually a big one. Um, can anyone think of a comfort food that they have? Something they go to that is just comforting. I love stuffing. 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 Yeah. Stuffing's a huge one, right? And it's probably because it's tied to a happier time. So we have mac these. Cheese. What? <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. Home, homemade mac and cheese. Homemade, homemade mac and cheese. Absolutely. Do you have a memory tied to it that makes it a comfort food for you? Yeah. Just like my whole family cooking with like the breadcrumbs and everything. Yeah. yeah absolutely. absolutely. So these comfort foods are usually very rich foods that are tied to comfortable, happy memories, right? Um, I'm sure that some of us can identify with times in our lives where like when you were little and you fell off your bike and you came in and you were crying or you were upset and uh, you know your mom gave you a chocolate chip cookie or you were in middle school and the girls or the boys or somebody was being mean to you and you came home and you were crying and you know you sat down to talk to one of your parents and food was provided to you some kind of sweet or treat right or you went for ice cream some kind of treat where it was like to to kind of calm you down so it becomes ingrained in us that those types of food become comfort foods. Um, so it's really all about trying to balance how we deal with our, our emotions and our stress and, and really um, listening to our bodies because um, the foods we eat affect our overall wellness, right? So wellness is a state of being. It's an overall good health. It uh, involves your mental health, your social health, your physical health. And so eating these good for you foods affect really all areas of your wellness. I'm sure that all of us have been in a time where we were eating a lot of not so good food for us and it affects everything, right? Our, our um, physically, we feel sluggish and tired. I know that when we were um, talking about those situations where it was like Thanksgiving and we overstuff ourselves or we're at the fair and we eat tons of fried food, all of you identify the, that you would feel tired and maybe have a stomach ache, right? 
So mm -hmm. it's easy to see that the foods that we choose and how we choose them and when we're eating throughout the day really do um, give us a better feeling physically but they also affect our mental health. So if you're eating tons of sugar, right? That sugar, I told you before, it it has uh, it increases our serotonin, which makes us go through like this roller coaster, right? So serotonin is a hormone. It makes us feel good and then we crash and we feel bad and then we crave more. So it's this whole roller coaster of ups and downs mentally and emotionally. And of course, social too. So you know, it affects all of those different aspects of our lives. And so when we choose to eat well, most of the time, that's not saying that you shouldn't be able to indulge, you know, through on occasion, but um, being able to choose well for most of the time affects all areas of our wellness, not just our physical wellness. Um, so again, it is going to really improve your physical health, your mental health, your social health. Um, not just one area, it all ties in. And when you're feeling good physically, then you feel good mentally, and then you're able to go out and have a healthy social life as well. So they all tie into each other. Um, I want to stop um, talking about why we eat, how we eat right now, and see what kinds of questions or comments you guys have. Bueller. <laughs> no. How do you guys feel you eat? Do you feel like you're healthy eaters, not so healthy eaters? Maddie, you're blinking at me. Maddie with an eye. I see the eyes. I see those eyelashes going. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the day. It depends on the day, right? Today, uh, no. Yesterday, no. But like maybe some other day, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you feel a difference in yourself physically and mentally when you're not eating well? Yeah. Okay. How about when you are playing lacrosse on the field? How do you feel if you, do you feel on and off the field, you feel um, differently when you're eating well versus when you're not? Um, if it, if I ate bad right before like an hour, maybe I'd feel like sluggish, but like if it was in the morning and I, if I had like a cookie in the morning and then played in the afternoon, it wouldn't affect me. Right. But it depends on like when, but definitely like it does make a difference on what you eat right before you play, uh, play a sport yes. or work out or anything like physical. Absolutely. All right. Um, anyone else have any questions or, um, yes, I don't know if anyone has anybody commented on these like bitmojis yet. Oh I my know. God. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I love like, them. Yeah. These are very impressive. Uh, so I have to tell you, so I am a foods teacher, right? And so I'm so sad that I'm not allowed to cook this year. So I have been like all about my <laughs> emojis this year because I'm like, I have to have some fun right now. So we are actually, I know RBC, you guys, I don't know if you take foods there, but I know you guys are cooking. Um, we are mm -hmm. not, I'm not allowed to have any kind of food in my classroom right now. Um, so Aww. on the days when my kids are home, they're cooking when they're at home. Um, and then when they're with me, we're super boring, and, you know, so this is how I make myself not so bored. So thank you for noticing. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I have a question, Michelle, how did, how did you, what interested you in pursuing nutrition? Um, so there were a couple things. So uh, honestly, I didn't even know that nutrition was like a thing. So I, um, in high school, all that. So I probably was not a very healthy child. Um, I became healthy when I started researching nutrition on my own in high school and I played a lot of sports and, um, I started researching nutrition and I became very interested in it, but I had no idea that it was a career path. So, you know, back, I, I know I said that I'm about 24. Did I tell you guys? Right. So back, you know, four or five years ago, they didn't really, um, they didn't really, um, 
guide us very well like they do now on like your job careers job choices all of those things at least not where i was um and so i really didn't know what i wanted to do and i started off and i went to college for a couple of years in florida but i still had like no career direction and then um i and then I actually was a flight attendant for a few years because I was like, I don't know what I want to do. So let me do something. And then as I was a flight attendant and then I realized like, oh, wow, like I love nutrition. I love cooking. And this is something that I can do. So research of like, of actually, um, of figuring out like what I liked and I knew how much I loved cooking and how much I loved nutrition um, I found a program and that's kind of how it all t came together, but I didn't know that it was actually a career path. Um, and that's how I got into it. Again, my whole career life has been zigs and zags and I really didn't know, you know, um, once I went back to school for nutrition at Rutgers though, like I was all in, um, I don't know if that answered your question, but. Yeah, I didn't know you were a flight attendant for a little while. You didn't? No. So <laughs> Christina was also, she had a similar path. Talk to me. Well, I was with uh, Continental Connection at the time. Uh, at okay. A Newark. Um, okay. Mute Air, I was okay. 19. Were you based at Newark? No, I was based on Atlantic City, actually. Oh, get out. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I was based on Atlantic, uh, I was Spirit before Spirit was Spirit. Um, so I was uh, like, did tons of charters and then just like uh, East Coast and mid, mid country flights. So, nice. yeah. Awesome. Hey Rich, yeah, we're happy two whole here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, any and speaking hey of someone that likes to cook, Rich, what'd you make for uh, dinner tonight? Uh, I'm actually, I got it on the, uh, oh, can you hear me? It. Yep. Oh, you can hear me. Okay, perfect. I'm sorry, I can't see myself. Um, actually, a little bit of a chicken soup. Nice. nice. Oh, I saw yeah. a picture that looks awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it's uh, literally from scratch. So no stock, wow. no broth, no anything. It's been cooking for about two hours. Oh, awesome. that's awesome. So, Amazing. Sorry, I am so late. I apologize. So Rich oh, is- yeah. It's okay, super... Rich, we were, we were waiting to start actually. <laughs> <laughs> Rich is no. super fun to follow on Instagram and he pretty much documents every step in his cooking. I love and it. It, oh. it just looks amazing and the whole process is awesome. That's so fun. So I currently, because I can't um, cook in my classroom, I currently, like, I have to video everything that the kids are making from home. So I am such a dork. So all my videos are like, you know, welcome to my kitchen. And so, uh, so cooking show-ish. I love so it. Fun. Yeah. I'm like, and now I'm going to pull this out of my magic oven, you know? <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. That That's is a lot fun. That's cute. Yeah. That is very cool. So I have a question. I have another question, Michelle. Yeah. With, you know, times today, um, all of us yeah. um, being quarantined at times and that, that isolation and yep. some of us feeling depressed and lonely. Yep. What are some key snacks that you would Good. suggest Good to really help us? So the thing is that, um, so we're all stressed, right? So, and I started to say that that crunch is really important. So the problem is that most people will go to whatever they have. So if your uh, kitchen is stocked with things that you can eat that are healthy, you're going to eat them, right? You're going to go towards those things. So um, it's, you know, I, and it sounds lame, but like just even having like raw vegetables ready and prepped to go is helpful. So like, even if you make your own veggie platter or buy a veggie platter where you have carrots and, and uh, celery and all of those things, I mean, um, everything but the bagel seasoning is like my best friend for all those kinds of vegetables and stuff, but that crunch is super duper important. Um, other things are, uh, you know, if you're, if you're craving, um, 
sweets. It's just, it's not about not having them, but it's really about trying to make sure that you're having them in moderation. So filling up on those other things, like those vegetables or like soups, salads, if you have those prepped and ready to rock and you, when you're actually hungry, are eating those things, you're going to be less likely to crave the other stuff, right? Um, so if you're able to um, prep some stuff ahead of time and have those things available, you're going to be in a good place. Um, just even roasting vegetables um, and then like salting them, you know, you're, it'll, it'll be helpful for you. If you really need like those chips, it's all about portioning at that point, you know, so making sure that you're portioning things even like pistachios, something where you actually have to crack the shell open and, and then eat it. It's going to be a lot, um, it's going to make you eat less of them. If you, um, again, like even sunflower seeds, right? So like you actually have to crack open the shell and then get the seed out. So those kinds of things that take a little bit longer and they have that hand to mouth um, thing are gonna be helpful. Um, I'm trying to think what else fruit obviously is something that's ready, but it's all about that prep and having it available to you. If you don't have it available to you, you're not going to eat those things. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, it also depends on what your go-to foods are though, aim, you know, and trying to find a, a healthy, healthy substitute for it. So like, if you're a chip person, you might be somebody that would be into trying like kale chips or something like that or like sweet potato chips where you're like cutting those things and actually roasting them and, or, you know, drying them out and roasting them. Uh, yeah. But like, I'll tell you that, um, the, I was saying that everything but the bagel seasoning is awesome. Like I'll do, um, celery with a little cream cheese in there and that on there. And I mean, that like does a tr trick for me cause it has the crunch, it has the salt, it has like the flavor to it and it's super helpful. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anyone anyway, else have any 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 tips that they do? Does anyone have a good snack that they do at home? One thing I do, I have a gallon um, pitcher. Water. Yeah, water is so important too. Yeah, yeah. and I, I make it my goal every day. I cannot go to bed until that gallon of water so, is drank. What I've also done, with, I'm sorry. Um, what I've done with my students too is that we have a contest going, and it's a um, make my glass of water look appetizing, right? So like even like throwing cucumbers in your water, or berries in your water, or lemon in your water, like anything to give it that extra flavor is so important because it's gonna make you drink. Like I am not a water drinker. I don't know what it is, but it's like, and it's sounds silly because it's like a uh, like once you add something to the water it kind of changes the texture of it a little bit for me anyway mm -hmm. and so once I add stuff to it it's it's great and you could do it so if you're not a water drinker having that water is not only so important for um for your body because your body needs that water but it's important for your physical health it's important for your uh, mental health as well because you're you're brain needs that that liquid but it also curbs those cravings which is important i do a yeah. lot of seltzer myself what do you think about seltzer so seltzer's yeah. good but it actually does not hydrate you quite like water does um there's a change in the ph of it that it does not um quite like if you notice like i prefer seltzer too because it, again it's that textural thing but you don't it you don't feel quite as hydrated or quenched from drinking yeah. that as you would from water yeah. I have a, uh, a, a strict rule no matter what. Every single day when you wake up, chug a full, like, Agreed. 16 glass of water, no matter what. First thing you do before you go to the bathroom, before you do anything. And, I mean, scientifically, it gets your brain yep. uh, awake and moving in a different way. And I, I'll tell you, if I could have done that since I was younger, for any of the guys, uh, you know, any of the, the younger people on this this uh, call, I'm telling you, it's a, it's a really good practice. And, yeah. Uh, you just generally feel better all the time. Absolutely. I'm trying, I'm trying to make it she, a habit. She never but... does it. She just won't. <laughs> I took my call this morning. <laughs> I wake up at 6 a.m. and crack a seltzer. Wow. Yep. Like... Yeah, that's... <sighs> I need to change some habits. 
<laughs> so rich i'm interested to hear from you what kind of snacks do you have on hands i feel like you're the foodie on the call uh i have anything my snacks range from i'm not gonna lie frozen strawberries that i love to puree awesome. uh, yeah which is awesome because it turns into uh, ice cream and a food yep. processor to i'm looking at oreos right now yeah. um, and <laughs> well, actually you saying that actually jogged my memory of a couple of things too. So frozen grapes are amazing. And mm -hmm. also uh, we freeze bananas and then we put ah. those and that becomes like haagen consistency, right? So like yep. that becomes like ice cream when you, but you have to blend it for a bit. Like it takes a little bit, like longer than you think it should. But once you put that into a food processor, it's amazing. And what? it's just frozen bananas. It's yep. so good. And you're right with saying that too, because you're gonna sit there and you're gonna be like, all right, three minutes later, like, all right, why is it not? And then all of a sudden, out of the, out of nowhere, yeah, it's creamy, and you're like, okay, this is the best thing I've ever had in my yeah. life. Like, and then awesome. sometimes just to put like a couple chocolate chips on top if you need it, you know, yeah. you're you're good to go. Wow. But I so, will say that, so like with with Bart saying the water thing, that was actually I think one of my biggest things that helped me lose a lot of weight when mm -hmm. I was going through a lot of, you know, changes. Mm -hmm. Uh, going from high school to college, that jump starts the metabolism incredibly. Oh, yeah. Incredibly. Oh, yeah. incredibly. So it definitely does. Um, and it flushes out all those toxins too, mm -hmm. which is important. Huge. So, I, I mean, I know Rich is unbelievable, but Carla too. I can't, I can't get out of this talk about food without Carla is like <laughs> the most phenomenal cook. Uh, you could ever imagine. I mean, she whips. She yeah. Where is she? She's like hiding because I'm calling her, her out. Uh, there she like is. to cook, but it makes me. Carla <laughs> oh, makes uh. Well, homemade ricotta. I, I would say ricotta. Yeah, those aren't the healthy but snacks. Say, ricotta. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so uh, she makes homemade everything. Unbelievable. Very sweet. You're very sweet. Not so healthy though. That quarantine was hard for me because um, I was using cooking as like my hobby, my activity, which was good. Um, but I did focus on the not so healthy stuff. I wanted to keep doing baking um, to keep busy, but unfortunately then you're always making chocolate chip cookies. So, so that was hard. That was hard. I'm definitely yeah. focusing more on using my time to make healthier foods now. But I think it's, fun, you know, when you think about cooking and even like baking, oh, I want to bake, I want to do something. It always tends <clears throat> to go towards the yeah. baking unhealthy things but I agree with you about that um everything bagel seasoning I didn't oh. think I would like it but I I started oh, to um use it and it's fun it's really it good. is fun I agree I agree that's yummy yeah all right does anyone have any more questions we're right about at eight o'clock so I don't want to keep anybody longer no Guys, you're all amazing. Thank you so much for participating today and actually talking to me. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, it was first. great. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Yeah, sorry Michelle. I missed a lot of it. Sorry, oh, I was, was awesome, eating. Rich. I'm sorry. <laughs> you missed out. I was awesome. No, I'm just. Kidding. I was gonna say this sounds like this <laughs> sounds like right up my alley right now. So yeah. Oh, I'm just kidding. You can watch the recording. There you I go. I certainly will. I was going to say, I just see the recording in the top left. So that's perfect. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for you, coming guys. on and doing this. Everyone, thank you for signing on. Um, if anyone has more questions for Michelle, um, reach out to me, Carla or Carly, and we will put you in touch with her. Yeah, that would be great, guys. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. I think Thank, um, yeah. things like this are really great, I think, for us to all understand about wellness and stuff like that. So if you want to see more of it, let us know. Thank you. Cool. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Nice to see you guys. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Bye. Bye.